In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. <clears throat> Today, my beloved, as a church, you know, clergy and the board members, they decided to dedicate this Sunday to the youth in general. So if we have youth, we have young one, upstairs, downstairs, please come forward. Because today it's a special Sunday for you. So if you feel special, come over here. I guess Riyadh also considers himself young. Thank you. Before I begin this sermon this way to understand what as you know this sermon is about. <clears throat> last week, as you know, last week we had the uh, Virgin or Annunciation or Virgin Mary, which means the angel or the archangel came to her and gave her the good news. And this Sunday, because immediately she decided to go with them. Thank you. So to, after that, immediately Virgin Mary decided to go and visit her relative Elizabeth, right? She didn't tell no. So today, we are celebrating visitation of Virgin Mary to Elizabeth. The title for today, for today's sermon is Young But Full of Love. Young But Full of Love. So last week, like I said, Mary received the good news. And this week, a question. What makes a 15 years old, a pregnant girl, leave Nazareth and go all the way to Judea, serving her old pregnant relative Elizabeth? That's a good question, right? But love. What made her do this? That was love. And this is, we call it practical love. Why? She showed love toward God, number one. And we had to talk about it. And toward her relative Elizabeth. So what makes her love so special, Abuna? Okay, people can do that. Go and help some other people for the sake of, you know, of God's love or uh, for the sake of the, His commandments. But what makes Mary, 15 years old, her love so special? Folks with me, at this point, this way you will understand the whole, you know, the, the sermon. <clears throat> she could have told every, she could have every, told, you know, everybody when she received the good news, she could have gone and told everybody what happened, like the archangel who stands before the throne of God came to me. Came to me and the Holy Spirit made me pregnant and also the baby in my womb is the Son of God. Can you imagine what kind of news she has? But, again, Mary, she could have said that, but she didn't. She didn't tell no one. After that, you know, message from the archangel, she went to Judea district. 
Now, like I said, she didn't tell no one, even her fiance Joseph. So she could have said that, and if she did say that, actually she would save herself a hundred miles of walking was from Nazareth all the way to Judea, almost a hundred miles. And as you know, back then, they had no bicycle or cars or the trains. She used maybe a donkey and walk as well. So she could have saved herself that and also three months of serving her relative Elizabeth. She couldn't say that. She could say, you know, why me? Why should I go all the way down there and to serve her? But instead of that, you know, what would happen to her if she revealed, you know, what happened to the people in Nazareth in general? And we are talking, let's say, thousands of people. But again, she didn't. But if she told you know, those people in Nazareth, definitely they will respect her more, love her, and serve her. Instead, go with serving you know, the other. Serve her as a mother of God. But Virgin Mary, the young, 15 years old, preferred to follow God's commandment. What was the God commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as well. This is what she exactly did. Because of God's love, she fulfilled his commandment. And of course, she loved her relative like herself and she went to serve her. And this is, you can find it in St. Luke, in chapter 10, verse 27. Now let's go on or move on to the fun part, okay? And I need participation. Don't be shy. If you have an answer, feel free to say it. Now, the second part, which is why love? Which means, why am I talking about love? at this specific time of the year. Do we know? Christmas. What are we getting close to? Christmas. Christmas. Here we go. Here we go. Christmas, that's why we are talking about love. When we get closer to Christmas time, it is the time God has sent His only Son to shower his love over the whole world. When I say the whole world, of course, definitely, you know, over the whole world, but especially to those who accept that love. And now, that's what he did, of course, you know, during you know, Christmas time. But now, there is a question here. If we just, you know, think about it, okay? Can you imagine a world without Christmas, or I'm sorry, a Christian love? What would happen to the world? Can you imagine? It will be a very difficult world. There will be no humanity, no morality, no love. It will be a very difficult situation. So can you imagine how much Christianity helps the world. Now, there is five questions. All right? So it's very simple, but we need to just think a little bit about it, and I'm sure you know you will come up with a good answer. I'm talking here individually. individually. If there is no love, let's, let me talk about myself. I have no, I'm not carrying a love inside my heart. Blank will take place. Okay, I will repeat the question. If there is no love, blank will take place. What will take place? If there is no love, what is the opposite of love? 
Bravo Joe. Joseph. Bravo. Hatred. Hatred. Because if there is no love, can you imagine if there is no love in the, in the world? Hatred definitely will take a place. Second one. If there is no faith, there will be no, I will happen with the first letter, H. If there is no faith, Christian faith, there will be no hope. All right, Joe. <laughs> Bravo. Hope. That's why I want you to know most of the people, not most, maybe 99%, of the people commit suicides, they lose hope. As a Christian, we don't lose hope, no matter what happened into your life. Always there is hope. God will help you, will rescue you. Even if I'm, I die, you know, physically, we should have hope. There is a tremendous world waiting for us. All right? Remember this hope. Always have that hope. Don't ever lose it. Number three, if there is no peace, if there is no peace, there is a few words you can use, will take a place. If I don't have a peace or divine peace, what is, what is it? War. War? Yeah. Could be, yeah. But I'm talking like individually. If I don't lose it myself, okay, I'm talking my, about myself. If I lose peace, Definitely, I would have fear, right? If I don't have peace, maybe I would have anxiety, disturbance, right? So peace is very important. And this is what the Lord brought on Christmas time. Remember when the angels sent, right? Peace on earth. That is very important for the human beings. Wonderful. You're doing great, guys. Number four. If there is no church, here we go. <laughs> if there is no church, there will be no spiritual. But before I get to the answer, your, mo your mother, right, physical mother, always concerned about your food, drink. God forbid if you get sick, you know, take you to the doctor, to the hospital, for the sake of healthy flesh, right? Right? So she continues, you know, giving you food and, and feed you to have a physical growth, right? This is what the answer here. If there is no church, there will be no spiritual growth. And that's also very, something very important as a Christian to have. <clears throat> Number five. The last and the most important one, if there is no Savior Jesus, if there is no Savior Lord, there will be no heaven, heavenly paradise. There will be no heavenly paradise. That's why we should have a great hope, because that's waiting for us, eternal life. Life has no end. And more very, very beautiful. Like many times I have said, a lot of people they already went by. There is no words to explain what's up there. Now we talked about heavenly paradise. How miserable would our life be without a Christian elements? The one I just mentioned. Five of them. Again, how miserable would our life be without the Christian elements? There we right. So at this point, now I'm looking for this answer. At this point, at this point, should we be proud of our Christian faith? Christian, I'm sorry, maybe Orthodox, I should say, Orthodox faith or Orthodox. A church. I can't hear you. Let me repeat my, my question. At this point, should we be a proud of the Orthodox faith or not? Yes. I can hear you. Yes. yes. Exactly. You should know what you have in hand. 
you have a tremendous doctrine, tremendous faith, and you can grow up spiritually as much as you want. As much as you want, as much as, of course, to work on. Now, let me move on to, to explain this so that you can understand a little bit more about love, to understand that when am I doing right and what is it, you know, if it's self-love. So let's call it self-love. Sometimes, you know, they call it selfishness, but let's call it, you know, self-love. It is a weakness, unfortunately, all of us, all of us have, right? So, and sometimes we use it in a negative way. And let me give, give you know, a couple of examples this way to understand, you know, better. If one of your friends, for example, he made it to so-and-so or very popular university, but you did it, you would get jealous, right? Right? Okay. So when that happened, this is called, you know, self-love. Why am I not going to that you know, <laughs> university? So this is considered, you know, jealousy, but what should I do at this point? I should definitely, I will feel, you know, jealous, but I should come over that. And think positively, positively and say, well, the Lord maybe wants or prepared something else for me. Don't get jealous. Definitely the Lord will want to prepare something else for you if you trust Him. If you trust Him. Another example, during, let's say, high school or college time, a corrupted friend can visit you to use drugs. Okay? For what reason, let's say, I don't know if I'm using you know, the pop, you know, proper words, in way to feel high or have peace of mind or sleep better. And again, this is considered a self-love. You love yourself, but in a negative way. In a negative way. So let me tell you a true story of a young one. This way, you can understand, you know, God forbid if something happens, this way you can refuse that. So one of the young one, one day came to me and said, Abuna, I have this problem. I'm using drugs. I said, okay. I said, how can I stop you know, this? I said, oh, you can do it if you love God. You love yourself. Now you love yourself, but in a negative way, but that's why you're using the, you know, the drugs. But if you are willing to love yourself and think about you know, eternal life, because don't think just about this you know, life here on, on this planet. Always you have to think about the other one. And he said, yes, I am willing. I said, okay, let's do it. And he was really very serious about it. And thank God. We got him into God is love. Not self-love, God is love. And few, two, three weeks later, he said, Abuna, I'm sleeping better. I stopped you know, the drugs and I'm sleeping much better. Because of God's love. And definitely that person now, after you know that time, he is more into the love of God, and he has more of faith and peace, and you can tell he is a stable person. He is a stable person, and people really respect him. And definitely, he will be a good husband in the future, and a great father, right? Exactly. The last point, which is the most important one, divine love. We spoke about self-love, now divine or godly love. If we turn ourselves, or if we turn, or turn you know, our self-love into God's love, into God's love, and the church sacraments love, these two things only, 
I want you to focus on these two things only. God is love and the church or his sacraments love. You would be showered by all the Christian elements like I just mentioned before love, faith, peace, spiritual growth, and heavenly paradise. <coughs> all of this can come to you easily. Easily. And moreover, and I believe you know all of you love that, moreover, you will be loved by all. Why? Because they can see the image of a Christ in you. So is it a good deal, my beloved, if you get into God as well and his sacraments? Is that a good deal? Before you give me an answer, let me tell you this and then get to the answer. For you to know it is a good deal or not, let's take a lesson from our Heavenly Mother Virgin Mary and the thing that she did, like today. For the sake of God's love, again, she refused to be glorified by thousands and thousands of people in Nazareth. Right? That's what she did. For, the, for God's love, or for the God's sake's love. Right? So what happened, and what was, you know, the return? The Lord glorified her in the entire world. Again, the Lord glorified her in the entire world throughout the generations. Since, you know, 2,000 years ago, she is blessed and glorified among all the Christian over the world and throughout the 20 centuries. Just because she loved God. And this is what actually St. Luke in chapter 1, verse 48 and 49 says, this is St. Mary, you know, says, from now on, all generation will call me a blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things great things for me. And this is what exactly going to happen to any of us if we get into God's love again and fulfill His commandments, which means also, you know, His sacraments. God bless you. If you have any questions,